I've been a fan of Skyward Sword since it released back in the Wii in 2011, and when I saw it was getting an Ichi Rad, so I was pretty happy. I still really loved the game from the graphics to the characters and the dungeons. So of course, I was interested to see how which parts of the game they would change for this version since, you know, they had some other nice changes in other 3D Zeldas. And with that, I think it's a good time to get into what exactly was changed with this remaster. And no, I'm getting this information from ZeldaDungeon.net, so I'll link it in the description down below. Obviously, there was a bump in resolution and a bump to frames per second. Now it's a constant 60 along with being maxed at 1080p when dark and set to 720p in portable mode just because, you know, the switch screen is only 720p. This is really nice because I always thought the game looked really good back on the Wii, especially on the COT, and with all the upgraded textures here, this just makes me love it that much more. The next change I'm also sure a lot of people really enjoyed was the button only scheme. The sword swings here are just controlled by the right stick, which is really nice if you ask me. But there are some odd quirks to it like not having camera control without pressing L. And that's another new feature as well, having a fully controllable camera. And I kinda like it just because, you know, you don't have to spam C target, but for me, I'm so used to actually spamming C target, so that's why I do automatically. There's what I said with that, along with if you play with Joy-Cons, you actually don't have to deal with that because, you know, since there's nothing mapped to the right stick, you might as well just have the cam control there. And if you do play with Joy-Cons, you can actually have a full motion very similar to the Wii version. And if you ask me, I think the Wii version still feels a little bit more solid with its motion. Playing with the Joy-Cons still is pretty solid and the full button scheme is still fine enough. And I'm just glad that you have the option to do either or. Along with that, the full button scheme can only be played with a Pro Controller in portable mode with Joy-Cons attached and on a Switch Lite. Now we also have auto saves, which I guess is nice, it's just that I hardly ever use it. Along with that, you can now save to three different slots when saving, and you aren't limited to the slot that you start the game on, which I guess is nice, but if you really wanted to go back to an old area, you just go back there and explode, because for Skyward Sword, the game is very linear, so I don't really see the point of, you know, having a previous save, but it's always nice that you have an option. Also, the dialogue moves a ton faster, and it can be skipped faster as well. And I can say as someone who played the share of the Wii Fortune, thank god because that got kind of annoying. And on the topic of skipping dialogue, you can skip cutscenes now without being on hero mode, which is really nice. And from what I can tell, you can skip a lot more cutscenes here in the Wii Fortune. And what I can remember, you can only skip certain cutscenes, and honestly, that just got really annoying. And with the HD Remaster, from what I've seen, you can basically skip almost all of them. This can really help improve the pace of the game, especially for those who already played the game a ton and just want to explore the world and the dungeons as soon as possible. Something else that actually isn't really a new feature, it's just a nice quality of life thing, is that every time you collect an item, that same pop-up describing the item doesn't show up every time you open up a new game. And I like that because it really did get kind of annoying because, say for example in your collection you would have like 20 amber relics and it's like, come on, I already got this, I know what it is. So that's kind of nice. Another point actually kind of related to the dialogue is that some of the tutorial related ones have been cut out along with some of them becoming optional. And in a lot of cases, fee will not pop up and the fee icon will just flash and make a smaller noise. So if you don't want to listen to her, you don't have to, which can also help increase the pacing of the game as well. The Sheikah Stone near the night nice train area was also removed, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me since my only guess is that it's easier to look up stuff in case you get stuck, but even then, back in 2011, it wasn't that hard either. It's not a major thing, it's just a little bit odd to why they would remove that in general. Now we have the final change, that being the addition of the Zelda and Laughing Amiibo. This lets you go to the sky away, away without needing a ball statue, which is a nice feature, but it massively sucks that you have to buy a separate thing just to get a feature that should have been there free, and definitely what is one of the worst aspects of this remaster if you ask me. It does look nice, yeah, but again, it just f feels that Nintendo wanted to squeeze out another like $20, $30 Canadian just to give us a feature that totally could have been in there for free. And as per that change, that covers all of the stuff that was changed in the Skyward Sword HD version. It's got some nice quality of life changes here. 
I just wish there was a little bit more. Something like having the option to teleport straight to the surface area since manually traveling and having numerous trips can take a while because you're gonna have to do that a lot. Like for example, say if you're down below, like in the Lanaru Desert, you can just have the board statue say, hey, do you want to teleport back to Skyloft or do you want to teleport to the Thunder Egg? And I thought that would be nice just because again, you don't have to constantly like just go up to the sky, fly, Skyloft and then go to the place you need to. Oh, something else I thought would have been nice is that having this option also for the island as well since some of them how side quests related. And it's also kind of odd to me how something like the sacred tears you have to collect won't reduce since in Twilight Princess HD, the bugs in the Twilight Run wall. I kind of thought this would have been changed but you know it's whatever at this point. They're not that hard, it's just something I automatically assumed. But I still had a ton of fun playing the game. and. Honestly, what they did change is welcome since it just enhances the experience for me. Well, it's not the greatest HD remaster they've done for the Zelda games, it's not the worst. It's just somewhere in the middle for me. And I would still agree for not wanting to get the game at full price because I sure didn't. Just wait for a sale. If anything, the enhancements aren't really worth the 90 Canadian you have to spend just to get it. And I also want to hear what you guys thought about the additions and what else you would have liked to see get added. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, sub, and follow my Twitter, which is down below. See you guys later.